Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we've got a select and mask uh, tutorial and a helicopter flying overhead by the sounds of it. Uh, to cut out objects in Photoshop like people and then place them into different backgrounds. Okay, so what we're going to do is like here is a picture of a, a Chinese friend of mine in Melbourne just taken in the street. What we're going to do is we're going to cut her out and then we can save that in Photoshop and then we can give her an all expenses paid trip to Hong Kong. There she is in honkers. Okay, so we can do that. You can uh, cut them out and put them in another picture. I uh, will do another one with a slightly different method of cutting out. Well, actually, I'll show you two methods for this one. Uh, and we'll have these guys from the 80s band Totally 80s. If you're in Melbourne, uh, go along to Totally 80s sometime and see them and say hello to Richard and Ian. And we're going to cut them out and make it a bit fuzzy around the hair. They've got spiky uh, hair from their wigs here. So that's going to be a, a bit more of a challenging cutting out, uh, that particular one there. And then we'll put them into this poster. So we'll give you the background for the poster in Photoshop with the layers already made. And then you can uh, place them into there. And then your challenge task will be to take uh, this other background, a very similar background for a poster. Uh, these lovely ladies who are at Totally 80s, because people dress up in that, it's lots of fun. Uh, and then cut them out, especially with the spiky hair. That will be the challenge for the challenge task. And we can have a ladies night version uh, of the poster as well. Okay, so remember, I'm a bit of a slow talker. So make sure you go to the tools cog down on the YouTube play bar here and click on that and it'll have playback speed and just make the playback speed 1.5 or 1.75 and you'll find the video flows a lot better. Now this is kind of a three in one lesson. We're gonna show you three ways of doing select and mask and then how you can place uh, objects into other images. But the thing is it's a three in one lesson. So take breaks, maybe do the uh, Hong Kong lady exercise first the part one and then for part two and three, where we're doing the 80s guys using different methods, come back and do that later. And there'll be an index timeline. Uh, this isn't the one for this lesson. This is the one for the previous lesson. But uh, all you have to do is, you know, if you've done lesson one or you've done part one, you can finish up there and then come back and go to the timeline index in the video description and just click on this, this number here, 2626, and that'll take you straight to part two in the video, okay? So it's kind of three in one and you can come do it in three separate parts is what we suggest if you need to and come back later. So we're gonna go through a number of different methods to cut out objects or people in Photoshop and then save them with a transparent see-through background all around the edges of them. Uh, then we can place that cutout item that we saved in Photoshop. We can bring it into another uh, background image or a composite image and we can place it in there, all right? The uh, Photoshop term for it is placing. So part one, we're gonna do the quick selection with the Hong Kong travel picture. Uh, so we're gonna cut it out using the quick selection tool and then use select and mask to refine our cutout and then file place embedded is what we use in Photoshop to put it into the new background. Uh, with the 80 guys, there's part two, where we're gonna do it pretty much the same as part one, but it'll be a bit more challenging because they've got spiky hair that we need to select. Then we're gonna do uh, the 80s guys again, but use a mask, all right? So we're basically gonna achieve the same end result as part two, but this time we're gonna do it with the method of using a mask in Photoshop. So why do it using the masking method when it was perfectly okay in part two? Well, the thing is masks are useful for a lot of things in Photoshop and various Photoshop and videos and lessons you watch, they'll be using masking. It's extensively used. So you need to um, learn about masks and what that's about. So that's why we're covering it by the part three using a mask as well. So there's a PDF of detailed step-by-step -step instructions and we suggest you go to the video description, find the downloads link and definitely get those. Oh, there's even more pages than this, but they take you through step-by-step, -step, show exactly what we're picking and clicking on Photoshop and how to do things. So that will be very useful. And also the, in the downloads, find the link there and get the uh, lesson downloads if you wanna try out the ones we're doing in this lesson. So you can get the picture of uh, the Chinese lady, you can get the Hong Kong background, you can get the 80s guys and 80s ladies, and you can get the poster backgrounds for them, which are PS Photoshop files. And of course, the PDF of the instructions of the step-by-step -step download. So that's all in the video description. You'll be able to find those links and get those items. Okay then, so let's get into Photoshop and let's get started.
All right, so let's start with part one. We've opened up the download image of the lady from Hong Kong. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go view and fit on screen so that that fills up the screen. Now, if we go on the quick selection tool, now where that is, is this kind of this paintbrush with the circle dots on it. Uh, if that's not showing, if it's showing object selection, uh, if you hold down the mouse and click on it, there is also quick selection and there's magic wand tool as well. We're using the middle one, quick selection. So make sure you ticked on that and you've got this icon here. And what we can do is, you can do uh, in this new latest 2021 um, version of Photoshop Creative Cloud, you can just go select subject. And if you've got a picture like this, it's mainly the person and then just a background, it'll do a pretty good job, it's thinking about it, of just uh, selecting the person for you. It's pretty much done the job, okay? And done a reasonably good job. But other times you may need to use uh, the quick selection tool. So we're just going to go control Z uh, or control Z. So you hold down the CTRL key and Z to back out of that. And we're going to use this tool. Now we may need to make it a bit bigger. So up here where it's got the dot and 11, uh, let's up that a bit to maybe about this size. All right. And what you do is you just start dragging your mouse over the lady picture. Now you can see here how it's selected a bit extra in the background. If you hold down the ALT key, uh, it goes into minus mode. Now up the top here, uh, that was something we should tell you as well. Make sure you've got the um, plus paint brush clicked so it's dark, this one. And make sure you've also got uh, enhance edge here. Enhance edge needs to be ticked up on the top tools options for this quick selection tool. Now if we hold down ALT, it'll change back to minus mode. And what we can do is we can just minus away uh, that bit which got selected there. Then we'll go back to the tool and keep dragging. And this is doing a pretty good job because she's pretty well defined against the background. Uh, and we just need to go up and get that hair there. All right, now that's done a pretty good job and we've selected everything that we need. Okay, so that's using the quick selection tool to do that part. And now we go into the select and mask panel is what we do next. So up the very top where it had select subject, see here there's a button select and mask up the very top of the screen. Now this only shows up of course when you're on that quick selection tool. If you change to a different tool, like the home tool here, the move tool, notice that button's no longer there up the top. So you've got to be on the quick selection tool to have that button. And when we click it, what happens is uh, there are some paintbrushes down the side, which we're going to look at in part three of this lesson. And uh, we've got these properties over here on the right hand side and they should be open. So under global refinements, if that isn't showing, there's a little arrow here you click and then they'll show, okay? Now there's different ways we can look at this. At the moment, we're looking how it'll look uh, with just her selected. You can also uh, click on this down arrow next to this little thumbnail up here in properties, and we can have a lot of other different views as well. All right, so some of these views might be better to see what's going on. So, uh, on white might be good, uh, that gives us good contrast. If you want a silhouette and work on the silhouette, which we'll do for some things later on uh, with the spiky hair, uh, you can do that. And on layers, you can do this. Now, overlays looking pretty good here uh, for us. And what we can see is it's a bit jagged along the edge here, all right? So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna smooth it out a bit. So with this smooth slider, we're just going to smooth that out. And what else we're going to do is we're going to feather it a bit. Now what feather does is instead of making this really sharp, like it was cut out with scissors around the outside here, what feather's going to do is it's going to make it a bit fuzzy, a little bit see-through around the edges. And if we take that up to round three pixels, um, that will give us a bit of fuzziness around the edge and that should be good. And then we just say, okay. And you can see it goes back to this image here. Now there are some strands of hair that we didn't pick up there, but we're not gonna worry about that too much. All right, now what we can do now is, uh, let's see, we've got all that done and that's okay. And we're back to her, all right is we're going to apply a mask onto here that looks like a Japanese flag. So onto here, 
there's a quicker way of doing things and that is down the bottom right hand side of here uh, to make this background go clear okay down the bottom of uh, the layers panel here they've got this one that's a rectangle of a circle in the middle right that looks like a Japanese flag add mask so we're going to click on that Japanese flag one and what that does is it, it just masks over and makes transparent all of that background that's not part of the selection all right now we've got some uh, things going on here the edges of her hair aren't quite a hundred percent okay uh, but what we can do is we can use uh, the magnifying glass here the magnifying glass tool so let's do that and let's just zoom in on this hair and we can get the eraser tool okay so that's down here it looks kind of like pencil rubber underneath the rubber stamp so if we get the eraser tool all right and we're going to change the opacity so it's a little bit fuzzy around the edges we'll make it about 60 percent on opacity property up the top and what we're going to do is we're just going to carefully go down here we've also made it fairly big so on the size here uh, we want a fairly big eraser so use the size slider to make that fairly big and what we're going to do is we're just going to carefully now if you mess up like that just use hold down the control the ctrl key and press z to go back so what we're going to do is we're just going to go down and smooth some of this out so it looks nice and straight now by the time we put her on the background um picture of hong kong actually this won't be so noticeable uh, but anyway we can just make that a bit smoother now we've got kind of a little chunk out of her hair there by the looks of it so we'll just kind of uh, push that in a bit uh, that looks pretty good now around the edge of her shoulder what's going on here uh, that ended up a little bit fuzzy too because maybe her shirt's a bit her dress is a bit wrinkly so let's just sort of go along that a bit just making it straighter all right now another tool you can use is the band-aid tool so we can go on the band-aid tool here and some of these little dots this is the spot fixer tool if we click on those uh, he says it should take them away uh, right okay well let's just go back to view fit on screen and make sure down here I think we were clicked on the mask okay so down in the layers over here on the right we were clicked on that we need to now click back on the photo and then we can use the band-aid tool all right so that's an important thing let's go back make sure we are clicked on the photo here uh, get our magnifying glass and zoom in all right and then get on the band-aid tool and what we can do is these little dots here it's now on her instead of being on that mask around the outside all right so there's a few little dots here but look you're hardly going to see them but if you want to be a perfectionist uh, you can just click on those sort of things that one just does not want to go away i'm not sure why uh her hair's got a bit of light in there but that's probably okay let's just do a view uh fit on screen look that is probably good enough okay in the background picture we're hardly going to notice so we've done all that so now we're just ready to save it now how we save it and keep this clear background is we need to go file and save as up here save on your computer and what have we got here let's just put it here so we've got Chinese lady and we'll just call it Chinese lady clear because it's got the clear background clear number one and it's a PSD file make sure it's a Photoshop file if you save it as a JPEG um, it's not going to be clear all right so if you want clear you've got to use Photoshop or you've got to use PNG uh, don't use JPEG all right so make sure you're on Photoshop with this down arrow here for the save as type there's a little down arrow make sure that's on the top one Photoshop and we just save that all right and then that's done and then we can just close that image by clicking the x here or we can just go file and close all right so let's go file open now and in the lesson downloads we'll get the hong kong background and bring that in all right and then we'll go view fit on screen to get that full size now to bring the lady in uh you'll notice in the layers we've got the background layer here all right the padlock on it so we'll just leave that as it is and now we go to bring her in you actually use file place embedded so we go down to file 
up the top, click on file, then go to place embedded. And then we can find uh, our Chinese lady clear. So where we saved her was here, Chinese lady clear one. So the, P, the Photoshop file. Now, if you're not seeing the file types like this, um, there's a little photo here in Windows. You can change that to uh, things like details. Maybe you're seeing it like this. Uh, you can change that to, we want just large icons. Uh, so we can see what's what here, okay? So we've got the Chinese lady clear, so we'll grab that one and say place. And that brings her in, now usually it'll be really big or really small, but they give you these resizes. Now she's way too big, so all we need to do is we're going to just shrink her down. And the idea is that we want her kind of standing here in the street. All right, like that. We'll even put her right in the corner, perhaps. So the idea is that she's standing in the street there uh, in Hong Kong, and we've just taken of a photo of her there. All right, so that looks like a good size, and we're done. Now, notice on the layers, we've got a separate layer for her, the Chinese lady, all right? And if you use this eye here, if you click the eye, see how she disappears? That hides that layer, and you can click the eye to show it again. All right, now if you wanted to resize her, if you think she's too big or too small, just while you're on the Chinese lady layer on the right-hand side, go to Edit and Free Transform, and that will bring those sliders back all right, so you can change the size of her. All right, so we've got her inserted in there. We've placed her in another image. Uh, we've done all that. I'm just checking the notes here, what we need to do next. Now, we need to change some things here because uh, she's a bit too bright for the picture. So we're going to take the brightness down and try and change the hue saturation, all right? So we need to make sure in the layers you clicked on Chinese lady, and then we go image adjustments, and we're going to do brightness contrast. Now, she looks like she's got too much street light shining on her. So we'll just make her a bit kind of darker. Uh, maybe take some contrast out a little bit even. And we'll try the hue saturation as well. Image adjustments, uh, hue saturation. Maybe uh, saturate up her skin a bit to make it a bit warmer, not so white. And what else can we do? We can also do image adjustments. Let's try a bit of exposure on here as well. Maybe take the exposure up or down a bit. Okay, so that's not too bad. This light on her face we assume is coming from this bright light of the neon signs and things like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. And she's there and she's got her all expenses trip uh, to Hong Kong. And that's it for that one. All right, now you can make her bigger. We've made her a bit smaller there. It might look better, and I think in the instructions we showed you. So if we just get back on that Chinese lady, see how it's put all the adjustment layers underneath here. So make sure you clicked on Chinese lady here. And if we just go to edit uh, free transform, uh, smart filters applied, we turned off temporarily. Yes, that's okay. And let's just uh, make her a bit bigger like that perhaps. Okay, and that's that done. So we can just save that like you do file save as and save it on your computer as a PSD. So we'll just say Hong Kong lady finished. And we'll just put that up there. And I usually put just a PSD on it. So we know that's the Photoshop one. And then we'll save it as a JPEG so we can uh, Send her the JPEG and she can post that on her social media just for a bit of fun. Here I am back in Hong Kong. All right, so JPEG and we'll put JPG there. Okay, and save that. And we can use large file because it's only 245K big. All right, so that one is finished and done. So that is, um, let me just check here, we've done everything. So yeah, that did a reasonable job and so we're on. Uh, part one is finished and next we're going to do part two. So you might want to take a little break now. So if you need to, take a break, get the downloads, practice all of these things. Uh, you can also, on that background picture, by the way, if you want to, you could click on that in the layers. So that's the active layer. Uh, go on the Spot Fixer tool, the Band-Aid, and maybe some of these bright dots here, uh, if you wanted to get rid of them, uh, you could as well. Maybe the lights in that apartment are distracting few little bright, weird bright dots here as well. Uh, we could just take a few of those things away as well if we want to. Uh, yeah, and that's all good. 
Okay, maybe that red near here isn't so good. So we'll just sort of uh, take some of that away. Anyway, you can fiddle around a bit and fix it up and just uh, resave it. And that's that done for part one. Okay, so welcome back and let's work on part two. So we've loaded in from the downloads the 80 skies start and we're just going to go, uh, sorry, we're going to go view and we're going to do fit on screen just so that's a bit bigger. Okay, now this time we're going to do things a little bit back to front. We're going to select the background um, rather than select the guys, okay? So we're on our quick selection tool and this time we're selecting the background around the guys, okay? So we're just going round here. All right, now the tool has not selected the light. That's good. Uh, now there's a couple of other little bits you need to get. So if you hold down the shift key, that adds to your selection. So hold down shift and just get this bit in here. Now we've grabbed his arm as well. So we need to hold down ALT to go into minus. You can see the minus sign hopefully in the inside the selector. Uh, so we're just going to try and do that. And that'll subtract away that bit. And there's also a little bit between in between those guys. So let's use the magnifying glass to zoom in. Uh, let's now go back onto our quick selection tool. Let's make the brush size a little bit smaller and hold down the shift key to add. And we want to try and just add in cutting out that part as well. So if we go view fit on screen, all right, what we've got there is we've just got all the background this time. All right. And so we're going to save this selection. Now that's ha a handy thing to do. Ah, now I haven't got the guys uh, spiky bits here. So hang on, I better hold down the shift key and try and add on here. Maybe we better zoom in and get back on the quick selection tool would help. I want to subtract away. Uh, I don't want that hair to be part of the background. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do here is, uh, what have we done here? Okay. So I want to remove that from being part of the selection. Uh, and now I want to hold down shift and add this back in. So yeah, you might have to fiddle around here a bit. This is why this one's a lot harder. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We want to get that bit of wall in there, but we wanted to keep his kind of spiky hair. All right, so we might need to just plus in there. Okay, that is looking good. Now let's just say what would happen if um, we also did a minus hold down ALT and we accidentally had the light as well. I'm going to do that. All right, so let's go view. Uh, fit on screen. So that's got all the background and we have got the hair this time. So let's fix that up. So this one's harder. It's a bit of fiddling around. Now what we're going to do is we're going to save that selection. So what you do is you go to the select uh, up the top here and you have to go down a fair way to find save selection down near the bottom. So I'm going to save that and it's going to get saved in a channel. Now we're going to call this 80s guys BK GRD select. Okay, and we're going to say OK and save that selection. Now where the selection actually goes is it's not in the layers where it goes, it's in this other one. So if you go down the bottom right hand corner here, see how there's layers where we've got our layer. If we go to channels, uh, click on that, you can see that there's this one 80 skies select background. And if you click on it, it shows you uh, what we've selected. All right. And we've also got this little bit uh, here selected, but that won't matter. When we do part three of the brushes, you can find out how to fix that anyway. Uh, now to get out of that, uh, just click on RGB to go back and then we're back here and we've got our background selected. All right. So that was about selecting the background. Uh, now masking selections are saved. All right. So uh, because that's saved, what we can do is we can just go uh, back to our layers here. And if we go control D, okay. And then control holding down the CTRL key and D just stops the selecting process. So we're back to our original folder. But if we go to channel um, to channels now, and if we click on that and we go um, control click should uh, bring the selection back up. So if you hold down the CTRL key and click that channel, uh, you can see now when we go back to layers, uh, it's still in black and white, which is weird. So let's go back to channels 
And what we need to do is after we've control and click on this guy to get the selection ants happening again, these, these are called the marching ants, these dots that move, uh, then you need to click back on RGB. So it's back in color, so it's back in red, green, blue. Then go to layers and then you can see it all in color again. So we can get our selection back uh, by that. And that's why it's a good idea to save a selection. Now, what we need to do now is uh, we want to delete this background. And if we try and press the delete key on the computer, uh, it's going to do this content aware stuff. And we don't want to do any of that. What we want to do is just delete it and make it transparent. So in the layers, there's a little padlock here on this background layer, the image that's come in. So you need to go to layers and just click that padlock once and uh, that will unlock the layer. All right. In older versions of Photoshop, when you click that, there might be a message you have to say OK to, but in the newer version, you just click the padlock and it's gone. So uh, that is all good. Now, what we do now is now you press the, just the normal delete key uh, on your keyboard, which is usually up around the top uh, right hand corner of the keyboard, and that deletes all the background and makes it see through transparent. That's what these uh, gray and white squares mean. We've got the checkered flag and it's see through transparent and Let's just read through the instructions here and see what's happening next. Okay, now we need to smooth that selection out a bit. So we're going to use select and mask. Uh, so if make sure you're on the actual quick selection tool, then you'll have select and mask available. So select and mask, click on that. And remember, we are on that red one, uh, which we found was pretty good. Uh, if you want to change that, you can change it to black and white. It's another good one to be able to see the hair. All right. Or this on black one doesn't work badly as well. Uh, now, what we want to do is try and fix that hair up a bit. Now, you can use your feathering and your smoothing, but there is actually a button here, which is for refining hair. All right. So, in older versions of Photoshop, you use these add and subtract paintbrushes to get all the hair fixed up. Uh, but in this newer version of Photoshop, they have got this refined hair. So let's try and get maybe on that overlay where you can see the hair fairly well and click refine hair. And I'll think about that a while. And what it's done is it's done a pretty good job uh, of sort of getting that spiky hair fixed up for us. And it's been okay. So now we'll just go back on to... Uh, Let's look at all the other views, marching ants, uh, on layers, black and white. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good, all right? So what we can do now is, uh, we will do a bit of smoothing and feathering, so just a little bit of smoothing. What does it say here that we recommended to do? Maybe 10 on the smoothing, sort of around 10, and then feathering about kind of 2.5 just to make it a bit fuzzy around the edges of there and then say okay uh, then that's pretty good and we've got all that and we can do control d on our computer and deselect that all right now if you look at the layers we are selected on the picture now we could still fix some things up so if we go in here um what do we need to do? Well, you can see there's some little bits of background still in that hair. So we could go on the eraser tool and we could make it really small here on the rubbing out tool. And we can just try and just rub those little bits out just to have the actual spikes. Okay, like that. So this is, yeah, very kind of painful. Um, takes a while sort of stuff, but we could do that. Uh, now, there is a bit of green on his hair there. Maybe we could try the rubber stamp tool and see what that does. Maybe just drag along with that Band-Aid tool to get other sort of hair there so there's not so much green. Uh, over by this guy, we actually had that green light um, get selected as well. And that's going to be bright in the photo. And we don't want that. So get onto the eraser tool. Remember, we've made it pretty small, about size 10 here. Uh, and just get onto that and we just need to get rid of um, these parts where there's green light. All right, so his hair's pretty spiky, so it doesn't matter if you take some of his hair away. Uh, and this whole ugly green light here, we just need to... Now, we might need to change the opacity up here on the eraser tool and put it back up to 100% because uh, we want to get rid of all of this green light. 
um, but so we don't get kind of sharp cutting, uh, you just got to be careful. All right, it's a good idea to uh, take your finger off the button every now and then, because if you make a mistake, it's just one holding down control and then pressing the Z or Z key to go back. Uh, if you keep doing this for ages and ages, then make a mistake and do your control Z or control Z, uh, you're going to have to redo a lot of stuff. So we just stop every now and then doing it. Then we push down our mouse button. Then there's only little steps to go backwards if we have to go backwards. Okay, now let's just do a view fit on screen. Uh, that is looking pretty good. Now down here, maybe with his shirt, it's a bit kind of a bit scissory cut out there. So let's get on our eraser tool. Let's make it a lot bigger. And let's just go down along that shirt, trying to smooth things out a little bit. Oops. Now, might need to go down a bit. Of course, remember we are magnified in here, so those little lumps and bumps won't be so bad uh, when we zoom back out. All right, now there was a bit of his arm that got selected there. So let's just try with the spot healer tool, uh, the band-aid, just to drag along there with the mouse pressed down. And that did not do a good job, actually. It's made it a bit rough. Uh, so we're going to have to do quite a bit of spot healing dragging there to try and get that straight. Okay, let's do view fit on screen and see how that looks. Okay, that looks all right. That's pretty good. So that's uh, good to go, I think. So we can save that as 80 skies selected. So the dog's barking a bit there. I don't know what he's doing. He's in the other room. So file save as. So we'll call this 80s guys. Um, 80s guys. And remember, we're saving this as a PSD Photoshop file. Selected number two. Uh, we'll call it PSD. And make sure, yeah, in the type it's Photoshop PSD here. So use that down arrow to pick that. Uh, and let's save that and say OK. And then we can just use this X to close it. All right, so all we're doing here is we're just following these step-by-step -step instructions. And you can see it tells you all the things you have to do, like holding down the shift key and getting that extra bit in between the guys. Uh, what they look like in the channels, how you save a selection with select, save selection. So yeah, these downloads will help you out a lot. And that's all we've been doing during the video actually, is following these. This is where we did our on black, our overlay, all those sorts of things. And we've got our guys cut out and we fixed up those little bits with the hair and the green. And we're on to part three now, where we're gonna do that whole same thing again, but this time we're gonna select using a mask because you need to know how to use masks. So we've been going 35 minutes, so you may want to take a break take a break now um, work on what you've learned so far and get those 80s guys all selected out of a clear background and all nice and clean and smooth and save that and then come back and use the timeline index in the video description to come straight back to part three and we'll do the last part of the lesson part three all right, so welcome back. So we've just done file and open and we're getting the 80s guys again. And we're gonna go view fit on screen. And this time we're gonna learn about masks and how to do the selection of a mask. Now masks are used a lot for a lot of things. And in later lessons, are uh, you gonna see or other things you look at on the internet, you're always gonna see people using masks and you need to know a bit about them. So this time we're actually gonna select the guys uh, with, the, with the selection tool. So let's get onto our quick selection tool here. All right, and let's try select subject and see how it goes. We'll just click select subject up the top here. It has to think about it a while. And look, it's done a pretty good job at selecting the subject. The only thing is we've got a, a little issue in here and we've got an issue down the side here. All right, so in here, we're gonna to need to zoom in and just fix things up a bit, okay, with the selection. So we hold down the ALT key, uh, get back on the quick selection tool, hold down the ALT key and we can, uh, now what do we need to do? We want to uh, minus that away. Now if I do that, has that minused it out? I think it has. Uh, so we'll just do that with his shirt, although his shirt kind of goes to there. That's a bit tricky, isn't it? Maybe if we do plus, 
that's not bad like that. And down here around his arm, we've got a bit of a mess. Uh, so we want to make sure that we want to take this part away. We don't want that selected. So remember, we're doing the opposite here. This might do your head in, but this time we're just trying to select the guys. All right, we lost his arm there. So we'll go to the shift button and get his arm back. And this is being difficult. Uh, maybe if we make our quick selection paintbrush smaller, and we'll just click on this gray bit here. Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, we've got a little bit in, we want to just minus that bit away. All right, so a smaller brush makes that happen. Uh, so we've got all that. Let's do view fit on screen. Okay, so this time it's the opposite. We're selecting the guys, okay? So we've got the guys pretty well selected here. And so that was just using select subject to make things a bit quicker. And what we're going to do is now we're going to use that Japanese flag again to make a mask. Okay, so we've got our guys here. So remember in the layers panel here, down the bottom, there was that uh, rectangle with the circle inside the Japanese flag. We're just going to click that and that will make a mask for the background here. All right, and it's made our background all clear. And so that's all good. And you'll notice in the layers here, it's a little different. Uh, this time we've got the original picture and we've got the mask as well, uh, showing on the layer that we have a mask on here. All right, now everything outside the mask goes transparent. And what we're gonna do now is uh, we're going to, uh, you can double click on this uh, icon here, or what you can do is you can click on it so it's highlighted and you can go window and properties. Okay, so we're just gonna go window properties, which brings up these properties for the layer mask. And what we're gonna do now is if it uh, brings up, it might bring up a question mark box here that says, do you wanna uh, enter select a mask or do you wanna view properties? Choose view properties on that and you'll read that when you read the instructions. And we just go select a mask. So we've clicked on that. Okay, and then we've gone view and we've gone properties to get into this. So we've gone window and we've gone properties. We've ticked the properties. So if we go window properties, we can tick that. And we're going into select and mask, our good old friend select and mask. Okay, and what we're going to use is we're going to uh, use this down arrow here and I think we're using the on black one. So we're not using overlay. Although overlay is not bad. I'm starting to like overlay uh, better maybe than on black, but we'll just go for on black. And if we try and use refine hair button up the top this time, um, it's kind of cutting out like he lost all his hair there. He's going to have a big hole in his head. So that's not too good. So hold down the CTRL key and press Z. So the AI um, kind of gets freaked out by these spiky hair wigs and doesn't work. So we're going to use these add and subtract paint brushes here that are over the left hand side. And remember your best friend is the CTRL and Z key to go back. And some people will find this painful and think it's way too hard. But this is a really important skill to use for learning masks, all right? So we've got these brushes here. Now this first, this second brush down is to refine the edge. So if you need to fix up your edges a bit, uh, you can use that. Um, so we're not gonna use that one so much as the third one down. Now the third one has two different modes. Uh, if you're on the third one down and up the top here, it's clicked on the plus sign. So the plus square is a little bit dark, has gone darker. What that means is that it's going to be the add brush and it's going to add parts of those masked out sections back to our screen. If we're on the minus one, it's going to add to the mask and take sections out. So we're changing our mask with this brush. So let's get on the minus. Let's use the magnifying glass tool here on the left hand side and let's zoom right in on those spotlights and show you what we mean. So if we're on this third tool down and we're in minus mode, what it should do is it will subtract away um, that selection of that light okay so it's going to add that as part of the mask okay and we're going to be able to remove that light now if you change to plus mode and paint with that brush 
what it'll do is it'll add the light in. So if you actually wanted the light as part of your selection, but you find, oh, the light isn't in there, you can use this paintbrush in plus mode to get it as part of the selection. But we want to actually remove it. So on this third paintbrush down, which is the main one we use, go to minus mode so you can subtract away. So I want to subtract away from the selection of the guys. We don't want that light to be part of the selection. And likewise, we don't want this light in here to be part of the selection. So what we can do is, uh, remember how that shirt was difficult there. While we're in minus mode on that brush, let's go in here and we'll just fiddle his shirt a bit, change it. So it's a bit like that. So that is now no longer part of the selection, all right? And that's a lot cleaner in there. So at the moment we're using the third brush down and we're using minus. Maybe we could minus away a bit of that there. Uh, but everything else is actually looking pretty good. Okay, now do we need to add things back in? Well, you could go to plus mode here and, and just add in and check if we've missed any hair there. Well, we haven't because that's just adding in all background. All right, so press Control and Z or get on the minus version of the brush and paint it back out. But that's kind of pretty good. So this is for uh, adding and subtracting from your selection, like how we were able to subtract away that part of the shirt and make that a lot better. So that's what these brushes do. We mainly use uh, that brush. The Refine Edge brush, let's just try that out and see what it does. Uh, now, unfortunately, we don't have anything. It's done a pretty good job at doing edges. Maybe this looks too much like a semicircle here. So let's try that refine edge and see what it does on there. All right. Uh, okay, it's not doing a whole lot. You can sort of fix up the spikes of hair a bit with it. Now that one there, what happens if we paint on that or paint on that? All right, so I don't use the Refine Edge one much. I use that third one down a lot with the plus and the minus to either add things into the selection or to take them away like I wanted to take away that green light. So that is looking really good now. So what we can do is just do a little bit of smooth and feathering and then I think we're right. So let's just smooth out things to about eight, just around sort of the eight, 10 mark on smoothing, just to make the cutout line smoother. And let's get, just do a little bit of feathering, maybe two pixels is all we need on that. And then we'll say, okay, all right, so, and notice here, see this fuzzy bit around the hair? That's partly see-through and that's okay to use, all right? That's okay to leave there. Uh, so now, to get rid of those properties that are there, just click this double arrow. You can go window and untick properties. So just click that double arrow just up in there and that will get rid of those. And maybe this part of his shirt's bothering me. So on your layers, remember, you need to be clicked on the picture, not on the mask. And what we'll do is uh, let's just get that eraser tool, have a bit of opacity on it, let's say about 50%. And let's just run along that shirt and erase a bit out so it looks a bit smoother. That's nice. Okay, so we're happy with that. So now uh, I think we'll just double check we've done everything we need to do. And what we can do is we can save that. Uh, this mask here, also, if you're in the layers uh, panel down the right hand side, if you click in channels, you can see it's saved that mask there. So it is saved in the panels and it's also visible here and it's linked up to the picture. All right. So that's if you want to work on the mask, you go in there and you double click it and you can go back into select and mask, use those paintbrushes, do things. We'll just cancel out of that and close our properties. But that is all good to go. So let's save that as 80s guys masked. And that's going to be a PSD file. And then we're ready to do our Put it in the photo, the final part. 80 Skies Mask PSD number two. Let's just save that and say OK. All right, so we're on to part four of the video. So take a break now if you need to, and then come back and use the timeline index to come to part four. Okay, so welcome back for part four. Now, part four, we need to open up. Uh, we've got an 80s background, ladies, and an 80s background. Uh, 
men's. Now we want the 80s background men's from the downloads. I've just saved my 80s mask and there were, okay, so we got that. Um, so this is the poster background. So let's go view and fit on screen and take a quick look at it. We're assuming you kind of know about layers. So what we've done is here is we had this background, uh, which we made, I think we made that in Adobe Fireworks actually. But and then we got a few other things. So we just got some pictures from the internet, some pictures of Pac-Man, because that's a real 80s thing. Uh, we did this font. We got a special font from Defont and installed it on our laptop. We won't show you all of that, but we've done all this for you. So they're all on layers. And what we need to do is uh, we'll just be on 80s night here. Uh, maybe we'll be on the top layer. And what we can do is we can place those guys in now. So you go file, remember place embedded. That's how you bring one of these cutout pictures in. And I like the mask two ones. I'm just gonna grab that and place it in there. Now the guys have come out microscopically small. Uh, I don't know how Photoshop decides on the size and things, but we kind of need them in there like that. It's okay if you kind of stretch them a little bit out of the picture, um, but we're just gonna take them up and up and up to fill it in nicely like that. Uh, and then when we're done with that, all you have to do is press the enter key or click back on the uh, home base move key up here in the tools. And that will be that done. All right, now they're on their own separate later, 80 Skies Mask, but you can see they're over the top of where we had all the uh, Pac-Man and all our fun things down the side. So you need to go into the layers, uh, get on them, click on them, then hold down your mouse and keep your hand on the button holding it down. And you can drag these to different positions in the stack. And where we need to drag them to is just so they're above the background, right? If we take them too far, uh, they might go behind the background. No, that's where we want them. So we don't want them there up the top. You push down and hold and you can drag them. We're just going to put them here. And then all of this is down here. Now let's be on the 80s guys clicked on them. Maybe we can move that across a little bit like that. We'll look better. Okay, now that's looking pretty good. And their color kind of blends in all right with that. If you were, um, we could go on our 80s guys here and you could go while you clicked on their layer, this should only affect them. And that's a great thing about layers. You could go to image adjustments and just look at doing some hue and saturation because uh, 80s colors are really bright. So yeah, maybe we'll just saturate them up a little bit there, give them about plus 20. And yeah, that looks pretty bright and pretty good. And they look like they've got Queensland suntans now. So that's great. And you just save that, all right? So save it as a PSD on your computer. And then also, after you've done that, uh, also save it as a JPEG, all right? So we'll call it 80s... Uh, 80s is the guy's poster we'll call it that um, and we've already got the PSD version let's say so uh, yeah you want the PSD just in case you want to go back and be able to change it because what JPEG will do is it'll take away all those layers and flatten the picture down and just make it into a picture uh, 2.1 megabytes big uh, that's a little big maybe you could go to 11 it won't lose much quality it's half the size 1.3 megabytes and save that and if we go to our folder, uh, he says, uh, there we have that poster. And yeah, we can send that to uh, the client and they can use that on their social media to advertise uh, this event, which is coming up, the back to the 80s party. And now I think uh, what we've got for you is we've done all of that, all of that, all of that, uh, and made the guy's poster. So the challenge task for you is uh, this one here. Yeah, so what you need to do is there's also in the downloads, there's a JPEG of some lady. So you need to get that. Use masking or selection, whichever the two methods you like. I kind of like the masking and the paintbrush. That's a bit old school. And it seems to work better on this uh, spiky hair. And then get them all nice for clear background. And then you can get this from the downloads. That's the ladies PSD um, poster background and put the ladies onto that and resize them and just make their colors look okay. And then we've got the ladies version of the poster as well. So the client's got two different posters uh, which they can use for their social media campaign and they're gonna be very happy. 
All right, so thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up, like, uh, and subscribe to our channel because we are doing Photoshop videos now and then. Although do we do a lot of other things like programming videos, and I know the programmers are dying to have a program video, but just haven't had time to do one yet. And uh, subscribe, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next lesson.